Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Friday, the 28th of December. Protests continue across India against new citizenship law. Pakistan seeks ouster of judge for ordering public hanging of Musharraf. And Rohingya refugees reject proposal to return to Myanmar. And now for all the details. Scores of protesters on Friday staged a massive demonstration outside a Mughal era mosque in Indian capital as protests grew across the country against a new religion-based citizenship law. There were also reports of violent clashes between the protesters and the police in parts of New Delhi and Uttar Pradesh province later in the day. A massive crowd gathered at the iconic mosque Jama Masjid in Indian capital New Delhi to protest against the Religion-Based Citizenship Amendment Act on Friday, the latest in a series of demonstrations that have grown in intensity. The citizenship law will give a path to Indian citizenship to prosecuted non-Muslims from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan, but critics argue the act violates India's secular constitution as it does not include Muslims. The protests at Jama Masjid came a day after several protesters were detained for defying ban on public gatherings in parts of India. The police said, however, there were no prohibitory orders for gatherings at Mughal era mosque, but elaborate security arrangements were done. Police also conducted a flag march on Friday in parts of the national capital and across India, asking people to maintain peace a day after protests turned violent in Uttar Pradesh and Karnataka provinces. We want to give a the police bal unke saath hai delhi police jo hai wo yahan ke logo ke saath hai aur kisi bhi paristhiti se ladne ke liye hum taiyar hain humne kafi jo hai wo logo se meeting ki hai unse baat ki hai dcp sir ne bhi kal do teen meeting li thi religious leaders aur aman committee ke logo se to unse appeal ki hai dcp sahab ne ki wo area mein shanti jo hai wo usko qaim rakhe however later in the day violent clashes between protesters and police were again reported in some parts of northern uttar pradesh province the police had to resort to firing of tear gas to bring the situation under control. India's Supreme Court earlier this week turned down a plea to halt implementation of the law but said it would hold hearings next month on the sweeping measure. The government has denied the charge that the law is anti-Muslim. Pakistan once again violated ceasefire targeting forward posts and civilian areas along the border in Punch district of India's Shamu and Kashmir, residents claim on Thursday. They said they have to face the heat of continued ceasefire violations by Pakistan while expressing fear for loss of life and property. Pakistani troops violated ceasefire along the border targeting forward posts and civilian areas in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. Residents in Mankot sector of Punch said they were forced to stay inside their homes as Pakistani troops fired small arms and mortar shells in the area early on Thursday morning. They expressed they live in a state of fear as they have to regularly face the heat of Pakistani firing which affects normal life in the region. जब भी फायरिंग होती है इसके अंदर देखें खास करके बच्चे जो डर जाते हैं स्कूलों का जो एजुकेशन है उसको फर्क पड़ता है तो ऑलमोस्ट काफी फायरिंग जो है पिछले दिनों से लगातार जो है मनकोट के अंदर आज रात को भी जो है आज सुबह को भी जो है फायरिंग मनकोट में हुई है बहुत फायरिंग हुई है उनकी तरफ से हुई है और इंडियन आर्मी ने मुंह तोड़ के जवाब जो है वो दिया है there was however no report of any casualty in the firing on thursday in last seven years, there have been over 7,000 incidents of ceasefire violations by Pakistan, resulting in loss of hundreds of lives. It is from Pakistan. The Pakistan government said on Thursday it was seeking to disbar the leader of a three-judge panel, which ruled that the corpse of ex-military ruler Parvez Musharraf should hang for three days if he dies before his execution. Pakistan's law minister Farooq Naseem said on Thursday that the government is seeking to remove the leader of a three-judge panel that sentenced former military ruler Parvez Musharraf to death on treason charges and added a rider about his corpse. Naseem said the judge Wakar Ahmed Seth had violated judicial conduct 
by issuing the bizarre order that Musharraf's body should hang in public for three days if he dies before his execution. The law minister said the federal government had decided to approach the Supreme Judicial Council with plea that such a judge is unfit to be a judge of any high court or the Supreme Court. The special court sentenced Musharraf to death on Tuesday after finding him guilty of high treason for subverting the constitution and declaring a state of emergency in 2007. Musharraf, who was tried and sentenced in absentia, said in a video statement from his hospital bed in Dubai that the charges against him were politically motivated. Legal experts have termed the special court's instructions unconstitutional, even if symbolic. His lawyers said Musharraf planned to appeal. It is from Afghanistan. The Independent Election Commission of Afghanistan has said it has completed the verification process and invalidation of fraudulent votes from the presidential poll in 34 provinces of the country. The presidential poll was held in September this year. Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission or IEC has announced that it has completed the verification process and invalidation of fraudulent votes from the presidential poll in the 34 provinces of the country. The Election Commission in a tweet on Thursday said the process of recount, invalidation and verification of votes has been completed in the 34 provinces in presence of observers of the presidential candidates and representatives of the Electoral Complaints Commission. This comes as a stability and convergence election campaign team led by presidential candidate Abdullah Abdullah has threatened to reject the election results unless IEC recount the votes in 27 provinces that the commission had already completed without the presence of Abdullah's observers. The results of the crucial poll have been delayed three times due to rifts over roughly 300,000 disputed votes. Afghanistan's presidential election was held on September 28th this year. Rohingya refugees living in Bangladesh have yet again refused to accept a proposal made by Myanmar officials to repatriate them to Myanmar, saying the demands have not been met. This came after a delegation of Myanmar officials held a second round of talks with Rohingya leaders on Thursday. A delegation of Rohingya refugees has refused to accept a proposal made by Myanmar officials to repatriate them to Myanmar, citing that their demands have not been met. The remark by the Rohingyas came after a delegation from Myanmar held a second day of talks with 46 Rohingya representatives in Bangladesh on Thursday. A chief delegate said that the meeting was a discussion and not a political dialogue and that they have yet to decide on whether to hold another meeting. আরা প্রথম নাগরিতা বাস্তবায়ন করতে হই নাগরিতা বাস্তবায়ন করি আর বাসস্থান তারা জিন দাবি দেওয়া আছে এনদিলে আর কিছু আরা তো দাবি দেওয়া আছে আর এই তারা রে সরাসরি দি আশা করি তারা যদি অলওয়েজ বিগুনে আরা দাবি দাগাও পুরো গুনা আরা সুস্থত ভাবে আরা দেশ সমাজ ফেরে যা বলা চাই নো দিস ইজ নট দিস ইজ নট দা পলিটিক্যাল ডায়লগ দিস ইজ আ ডিসকাশন জাস্ট ডিসকাশন টু এক্সপ্লেইন आवर द आवर এফর্ট টু ইমপ্রুভ দা সিচুয়েশন ইন রাখাইন স্টেট yeah and also to li to listen the uh, 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 their concern their concern Rohingya leaders have been long saying that they want Myanmar to recognize them as an ethnic group with the rights to Myanmar citizenship before they return Myanmar does not consider Rohingya a native ethnic group many in the Buddhist majority country call the Rohingya Bengalis suggesting they belong in Bangladesh 15 years after the Boxing Day tsunami, Sri Lankan communities continue to rebuild. Memories of the massive tsunami that killed more than 230,000 people are still vivid among the survivors. They believe the tsunami taught the people a great lesson on how to rise back from rubble. Sri Lankan communities continue to rebuild 15 years after the Boxing Day tsunami. Kushil Gunasekhera's memories of the massive tsunami are still vivid. Fifteen years ago this month, he survived the tsunami that struck his village by climbing up a temple on higher ground. But more than 230,000 people were killed by the deadly waves from the Indian Ocean on Boxing Day. Fifteen years later, however, the village has been rebuilt. 
and has risen from the rubble. The village once relied on coral mining as one of its main means of income. The absence of coral left the village's coast without any resistance to the killer tsunami waves. Uh, everything was in ruin, debris and rubble on that day uh, within a matter of few minutes. Um, but the good thing is we were able to turn the setback uh, into a blessing. Today, much of the coast that still reels from the tsunami relies on aid without long-term livelihoods. Guna Sekera chose to leave his lucrative trade in sugar to devote his time to rebuilding and started Foundation of Goodness Charity to help survivors like Namal Ishari learn vocational skills. Uh, I think tsunami December 26 will mark the 15th anniversary of the deadly tsunami, which was triggered by a 9.0 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Indonesia's Sumatra Island. Indonesia bore the brunt, but Sri Lanka was the next worst affected country with a death toll of about 40,000. The India-Russia Tri-Services Exercise Indira 2019, focusing on counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations, concluded on Thursday. The exercise included joint training across various Indian cities under the United Nations mandate. Indian and Russian troops trained together in various Indian cities during a nine-day-long military exercise, which concluded in India's western Pune city on Thursday. During the second edition of the bilateral tri-services exercise, Indra 2019, troops from both the nations carried out specialized joint counter-terrorism operations, which were witnessed by dignitaries of services of both India and Russia. The exercise included joint training in counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations under the United Nations mandate. This exercise has provided a unique opportunity and exposure to armed forces of both our countries, India and Russia, towards undertaking joint planning and operations for undertaking peacekeeping and peace enforcement missions under a UN mandate. The Air Force troops participated at Western Pune Air Force Station along with coastal Goa province and central Gwalior city, while army men participated in the exercise in northern Chasi district. The navies of both the countries also took part in the exercise in the Arabian Sea. With the annual sporting event of Jalika 2 just around the corner, bull owners in southern India have started training players for the bull taming festival. Jalika 2, which is typically practiced in Tamil Nadu province as part of Pongal celebrations, occurs annually in January. Bulls are being trained in Madurai city of India's southern Tamil Nadu province to participate in the bull taming festival of Jalikatu as the sporting event nears. Jalikatu is a sport that involves dominating and taming bulls. Participants pluck away bundles of money or other treats tied to their specially sharpened horns. <laughs> India's top court outlawed Jalika 2 in 2014, saying that it is cruel and not in keeping with what it described as the country's non-violent traditions. But it still remains an integral part of celebrations in Tamil Nadu on Pongal Festival, which occurs annually in January. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.